This is your guy, S.D. Booker, with a toast to the men. Before you listen to this video, hit the subscribe button. Definitely hit the like button. Hit that like button. Let's go. Get your glasses up. Get your glasses up. A toast to the men. Welcome to a toast to the men with your guy, S.D. Booker. Thanks for joining me. Thanks for the support. Before we get started, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Hit the like button. Let's go. 34-year-old Desmond Hamilton is shot and killed by 17-year-old Nicholas McQuirter, who is the boyfriend of Desmond's 14-year-old daughter. Now, this is tragic. Uh, my condolences go, go out to the family. And uh, actually, everyone involved, even though um, there is an aggressor, an assailant, uh, uh, a person who's on the offensive, but I think there are many victims. Everyone's a victim in this, especially the father uh, who was killed, Desmond Hamilton, RIP. Now, what I read is this 70 year old kid or man, uh, depending on how you want to depict him had been seeing this 14-year-old girl, the daughter of Desmond Hamilton, for, for a few years, a few months, a few years. And it got to a point, it got so bad that the family moved in hopes of separating the two to uh, create some distance between the two. Fast forward, that didn't stop anything. The young man, uh, McQuirter, Nicholas McQuirter, uh, made his way to the new location. So obviously the young girl gave him the address and uh, he made his way to the new location um, at night, established a, la a ladder onto the side of the house, climbed up the ladder, went into the window of the young girl's bedroom. And uh, you know, who knows what was going on? It doesn't really say, the reports don't really say if they were in the act of sex or not. But what we do know the father caught the young man in the home, in the daughter's room. There was a confrontation. There was an argument, uh, argument that ensued. The mother of the daughter and the grandmother uh, pulled the young girl to the side and was reprimanding her as Nicholas McCurder and the father, Desmond, um, Desmond Hamilton, uh, engaged in an argument. Fast forward, the young man pulled out a gun, shot the father several times. The father returned fire, injured in McCurder. As a result, the father died. McCurder is currently in the hospital uh, trying to recover. He has been charged. Uh, he's not in jail, of course, yet. They're gonna wait to, uh, I guess he recuperates. I guess well, but uh, he will be going to jail. And so it's a sad, sad situation all around. You got a father, young father, 34 years, 34 years old, dead. Over what? Uh, because someone wanted some coochie, couldn't hold, want some coochie, want some penis. And two people, two young people had a lack of respect, a lack of reverence and couldn't keep their emotions intact and their sexual energy intact. That's what it boils down to. Um, how does it even get to that point? We got a young father, 34. We got a daughter that's 14. Now, the good thing is the mother was in the home, uh, so she did come from a two-parent home. It says the, the mother was there. Uh, that's a good thing, but they had this girl at a young age. In all, you know, they had five children. Uh, one died, I think, in 2014 at six years old. But in all, they had four children, four living, five children, four living. And so that's a lot for, for a young man. Uh, we don't know the environment in the home, the energy in the home. Was there love? Was there, was there discipline in the home? I don't know. I, I know uh, as a young married couple, you're gonna face your challenges and uh, 
there may be some arguing, I mean, be some tussling. I just know as young people, that stuff happens. So we don't know what the daughter has seen, what, uh, what she's witnessed, but you know, why is the mother there so late at night? The grandmother, why is the grandmother there so late at night? So we don't know if they were staying with the grandmother or the grandmother was staying with them. But hey, what happened, happened, right? Now, man, we can attack this from, from different angles. I like to be objective and fair. So we got this 17-year-old dealing with a 14-year-old girl. That's an issue right there in itself. Even when I was young, I always questioned guys who dated younger girls. I always questioned that. I always thought that was weird. I, I'd never done it. Uh, either the, the young girls my age, but more so than, more often than, than not, the woman or the young lady was older than me. But I never uh, dated or messed with anyone younger than me. I thought that was weird. I saw them as little girls, uh, little sisters. So I always thought that was weird. But, you know, everybody doesn't mature at the same rate or is on the same level intellectually. But without me knowing much about this young man, I kind of can paint a picture of what what and who he is. Um, a 17-year-old messing with a 14-year-old has to have some maturity issues. Has to. He's closer to being a grown man than a young child. She's closer to being a young child than a grown woman. So there's a gap there. There's a huge gap there in maturity. And so that's an issue within itself. We got a young man who's willing to risk it all over a 14 year old girl and basically over emotions and, and, and sex. Come on, we, it doesn't say it, but we probably, we know they were having sex. For you to go through those challenges and, and jump those hoops to get to her, you find a new location. She gives you the new location where they move. You're climbing up a ladder. There's some sex involved. And, and that can throw off your emotions and have you blinded if uh, you don't get that thing in check. Thirdly, this brother didn't know his worth, didn't know his purpose and mission, and uh, wasn't focused. Now, that happens a lot. That's, that's not abnormal for a 17-year-old boy, but you at least should have something going on that's more important than a 14-year-old girl or any girl. Whether it's school, sports, homeboys, or whatever. You should at least have something productive going on that's more important than that. Uh, I'm sure he comes from a single-parent home. Not a lot of male figures, sound male figures involved in his life. Uh, this is not the, uh, the makeup of a child or a young man who's excelling in school. You know, young men who excel, who excel in school don't do these types of things. So, you know, I don't know the backstory on the man, but I'm just, I'm doing an analytical, uh, the, the <clears throat> analytical uh, assessment to who this young man is. And the young man I run into and I was a young man myself, so I kind of have uh, some some uh, some experience with this. So that's an issue. Now, with the 14-year-old girl, there's a lack of respect for the father, for the household. Um, there was an issue if they had to move. Man, I, I'd be damned if I move to separate my daughter from a young man. I mean, that... That's just that's just crazy, right? That's a lack of uh, discipline there, a lack of parenting, where you have to move to where you can't get her right and get your house in order enough and to ward off a young man from entering your house to, to the point you have to move, where you have to move your family. That's, that's an issue. Uh, and then the young lady gives out the new address 
and has the young man sneak into the house. Disrespect, a lack of reverence for the father, for the household. And like I said, I don't know the relationship between the father and the family, between the father and this child. So I don't know how it got to that point. I just know when I was a young man, we wanted to avoid fathers. Uh, we had a reverence and somewhat of a fear of a young woman's father. And, you know, it's a different ball game right now. You got a, a lot of young men that don't have strong male figures in their lives or don't have strong fathers in their lives. So they don't even have respect for men. They respect women. And that's not, that's not high on the chart, but they respect women more than they respect a man. They don't want to be told anything by a man, by a masculine man. They'll listen to a woman before they listen to a man. There's a lot of hate between a young man and an older man, the old man. There's a lot of hate. And uh, that comes from not having a father. That comes from stuff being seeped into their head by the mother, society. But there's a lot of hate. There's a lot of hate and disdain between the young man and the old man. And uh, it just wasn't like that. Even though some of us didn't have fathers, we had deacons, we had coaches, and there was a fear, a respect, a reverence for older men. We did not want a confrontation with a young woman's father. We just didn't. And, uh, and we surely were not bringing a, a gun to the scene. So this young man brought a gun and... Uh, he actually stole the gun, so he's charged with that, having a stolen gun, attempted murder, and, and another charge I can't remember. But uh, this is a mirror. This is a mirror of what we're dealing with in society. A lack of respect, a lack of reverence for men, young women out of control, uh, young men out of control. And uh, this is a reflection of that. This is playing out right before our eyes and so we all need to look at this and say hey we need to make some changes and this is what i teach all the time this is what i kind of lack of a better word preach all the time about order structure and the nuclear family and getting things back in place how they should be things are all out of order in this situation you know uh there's something going on with the young girl for he for her to even deal with a young man of this caliber. So um, they say the father was an entrepreneur, young entrepreneur, was opening a car wash in Zachary, Louisiana, and opening a snowball uh, business. Uh, but we don't know who he was on a character level, on a personal level. Um, so we don't know how it really got to this point. There's probably layers and layers around the story to how it got to this point where the respect just wasn't there. And, uh, you know, maybe he wasn't mature enough to where the young man even respected him. You know, uh, you know, I'm 45 and young men just don't come to me like that. They don't, they've never come to me like that. I've always been to, been able to speak to young men pull them to the side, and I'm talking about thugged out young men. <clears throat> I don't have an earring, I don't have a tattoo, I don't sag, I don't drink with these young men, I don't hang with these young men, uh, I don't have a thuggish look, but I'm able to pull these young men to the side and speak to them, and they show me the utmost respect. And I think that's got a lot to do with the way I carry myself. I'm kind of an old soul. And uh, I give respect, so I'm expecting respect back. And so uh, I'm just assuming some, some energy around this guy uh, did not warrant or demand respect from his household, uh, from this young man, uh, because the young man had no fear to go to the new residence to pursue this young girl. I mean, he had no fear. So that's, that's an issue. Uh, another thing I want to address, man, young men, young men out there listening, you should not be settling down with one female at 17. Whatever you start dating, whatever you know your parents allow you to date, what, 14, 15, 16, 17, whatever age they allow you to date, you should not be settling down with one female. You should be dating several females. Now, there's rules to this, 
Um, don't, I would say don't have sex, but that's not really realistic. Some will follow that, some won't, but I'll say this. Use protection, don't get them pregnant, and tell them the truth. Be honest. Let them know you're dating several girls or two or three girls, whatever the case may be. Always keep it honest. She may not like it, but she got to respect it. And that's the thing, man. You don't don't worry about being liked. Uh, worry about keeping your respect intact. And uh, like the young boys say, you know, she got to respect your gangster. So at the end of the day, she may not like what she's hearing, but she got to respect that you're telling her the real, keeping it real with her. And uh, that's just the way it is, man. Uh, but when you put all your energy into one girl so young, <clears throat> because you hadn't fully developed emotionally either, and she's not fully de developed emotionally, everything is out of whack. And these types of things happen because you got all your energy and you think this is your world. You got all that into one female and you're not mature enough to handle that. That, to have all your energy into one female like that, and I don't even think you should have all your energy. Your, your main source of energy should be on your purpose and on the utmost, on the most high. And then from there, you know, your wife, children. But to be so young and immature and underdeveloped, to have all that into one female, that is a recipe for disaster like we see here. I've heard many stories like that. Young boys killing themselves over women, <clears throat> getting to fights, ending up in the penitentiary. And look at this young man. In the, he's going to the penitentiary for a very long time. The young girl life will never be the same. She's going to be ostracized by the family. Now, by law, her mother has to take care of her until she's 17 or 18. But let me tell you, that relationship is, is messed up. That relationship is messed up. It's messed up with the in-laws, with the extended family, with the community. Uh, her life would never be the same. Uh, the mother's life would never be the same. Grandmothers, this this is uh this is gonna rock the family. And over what? Over sex and emotion at the end of the day. Hey, so that's why I say, man, uh never put these women number one. Put your gift and your talent and the most high number one, then everything else will follow in the proper order. And you'll have the proper perspective of everything. Listen, I'm going to close with this. <clears throat> I'm a storyteller, so I'm going to leave you with a story. When I was young, uh, 17, 16, I dated this young girl. Now, I, I was dating several girls. But I dated this one particular girl. She was she was my main one, I'll say. Now she was a virgin. And I never pursued, never pushed the issue, never pressed her. I just liked her. I dug her, my family dug her, and uh would hang out. And uh good girl, but I never pressured her, anything like that. Now that's not saying I wasn't doing my thing with, you know, another female, but I never pressured her. That was my main girl. Now, uh, my mom knew what I had going on. <laughs> and my mom, and this is another story of how females would stick together against men, no matter what the age or the relationship. My mom told her, hey, don't take him, my son, so serious. I said, one day he's going to make a good husband. But right now, he doing his thing. This is what she, my mom told her. My mom was hating. And, uh, this girl came back and told me that. I was like, wow, my own mom said this. Now, she was kind of right, but still, got to be a sense of loyalty there. But that's another topic. Now, remember I said I never pressured this girl. Now, when we graduated, I was going to the Army. She was going to PV. I had heard stories about PV. So I told her, and I'm telling you this, I'm telling young men, this is the maturity level you have to have to keep things in perspective. I told her, hey, we need to break up because, hey, you're going to get the PV. I said, things going to happen. I said, you're going to have sex. And she was like, no, I'm not. I said, yeah, you are. My older brother had taken me to block parties at UTA, North Texas, step parties. At a young age, at 13, 14, I was around these fraternities at these parties. I know how it goes down. So I'm being realistic. 
emotions in check. So we break up. She's heartbroken, but we keep in contact. Hey, I go to the army. I'm on break. I come back. She's on summer break. We meet up. And she, I said, hey, you know, what's up? Anything happened? She told me the truth. She said she had sex. I said, I told you you would. I know how it goes. An older upperclassman at a party. Hey, <laughs> that's how it goes. But see, if I was off balance emotionally, and if I wasn't a player, man, I would have handled that whole situation differently. Right? For one, I would have been pressing her about sex. For two, my mind, my perspective would have been blurred. Like, not my woman. My woman ain't going to college and going to have sex. Man, please. These upperclassmen got more game than me. They're more mature. They're more experienced. I was realistic. But that, that thing could have went a whole different way if I put all my energy into her, didn't have the proper perspective, and was wet behind the ears and green. And so, as a young man, hey, man. Protect yourself. Don't have kids. Don't get diseases. Tell the truth to these girls, right? Tell the truth. Keep it real. And uh, live your life. You can worry about selling down, man, later. Have your stuff established before you worry about selling down with one girl. But uh, just keep it real. Keep it honest. And most times, you ain't got to worry about no drama. Every once in a while, you may run to a crazy one, even though you told her the truth. But for the most part... She might not like it, might be heartbroken, but she got the respect unless she just she's off her rocker. But most women are gonna respect it even though they may not like it. Uh, yeah, man, it's a sad situation that's happened. But young men, learn from this. Learn from this. Young women that may be watching, learn from this. Respect your elders, respect your parents, have the proper respect for your family, for your father. Got to respect your father. If a woman does not respect her father, she won't respect you properly. You know, uh, even with my own wife, I had to check her on a few things with her own father because I can't undermine him and allow her to have a certain thought process and expect her to respect me in a proper way. No, you gotta, it's, it's, it's an order to this. Have a proper respect for your father and, uh, you know, I'm not going to just tell her, you know, gas her up and, and make myself feel good. No, this is the order. And you're going to respect me in a proper way because you got the proper respect for your father. And so, uh, yeah, man, you got to be strong minded. No simping. Tell your woman what it is, how it should go. Order. And, uh, you know, I wish the best for you. As always, from me to you, love. Peace.